In this video, we're going to talk about how to convert a fraction into a percentage. So let's start with a fraction 2 over 5. How can we convert that into a percentage? We're going to talk about two ways. But the first method is to convert the denominator into 100. In order to do that, we need to multiply the top and the bottom by 20. 5 times 20 is 100. 2 times 20 is 40. Now, whatever number you get in the numerator of this fraction is going to be the percentage. So 2 out of 5 equates to 40%. And that's one simple technique that you can use to convert a fraction into a percentage is if this number can easily be converted to 100. Sometimes it can't. But let's work on some more examples. Convert these two fractions into a percentage. 7 out of 10 and 4 over 25. Now for the first example, in order to get a decimal, I mean a denominator of 100, we need to multiply the top and the bottom by 10. 10 times 10 is 100, 7 times 10 is 70. So therefore this corresponds to a percentage of 70 percent. Now what about 4 out of 25? What is that as a percentage? Well, 100 divided by 25 is 4. So we've got to multiply the top and the bottom by 4. So 25 times 4 is 100. 4 times 4 is 16. So 4 over 25 is equal to 16%. Here are some other examples you could try. 3 over 4 and 7 over 20. Convert those into a percentage. So 3 over 4. We know that 100 divided by 4 is 25, so to get a denominator of 100, we've got to multiply the top and the bottom by 25. 4 times 25 is 100, 3 times 25 is 75, so this corresponds to 75%. Now 100 divided by 20 is 5, so for the second fraction, you want to multiply the top and the bottom by 5. 20 times 5 is 100, 7 times 5 is 35, so the answer is 35 percent. So that's the first method in which you can convert a fraction into a percentage. But now, what about something like 3 over 8? 8 doesn't go into 100 nicely, so we're going to use a different method. We're going to convert the fraction into a decimal and then convert the decimal into a percent. One way to convert a fraction into a decimal is to use long division. So 8 doesn't go into 3 nicely. So what we need to do is add a 0. 8 goes into 30 3 times. 8 times 3 is 24. We're going to treat 3.0 as if it's 30. It's really supposed to be 2.4. Now 30 minus 24 is 6. So we're going to add a 0. Now how many times does 8 go into 60? 8 times 7 is 56, but 8 times 8 is 64, which exceeds 60. So 8 goes into 60 7 times, and it's going to be 56. 60 minus 56 is 4, and let's add another 0. Now 8 goes into 40 nicely. It goes into it 5 times. So now we no longer have a remainder. So 3 over 8 is basically 0.375 as a decimal. Now, how can we convert this decimal value to a percentage? In order to do that, multiply by 100. 0.375 times 100, all you got to do is move the decimal point two units to the right. That's 37.5%. So that's the second way in which you can convert a fraction into a percentage. Use long division to convert it to a decimal, and then multiply the decimal by 100, and then you'll have the percentage. Now let's try another example. Let's convert 4 over 7 into a percentage. But we need to convert it to a decimal first. So let's use long division. We're going to put the 7 on the outside and the 4 on the inside. Now 7 doesn't go into 4. So we need to add a 0. Now how many times does 7 go into 40? 7 goes into 40 5 times. 7 times 5 is 35, and 40 minus 35 is 5. Now we need to add another 0. 
How many times does 7 go into 50? 7 goes into 50 7 times. 7 times 7 is 49 with a difference of 1. And then we can add another 0. 7 goes into 10 1 time. 7 times 1 is 7. 10 minus 7 is 3. And then if we add another 0, that's 30. 7 goes into 30 4 times with a remainder of 2. But that's enough. We can round it to the nearest thousandth place. So 4 over 7 is about 0 0.571. Now if we multiply that by 100, this will give us about 57.1% as a rounded answer, which we can work with. So that's how you can convert the fraction 4 over 7 into a percentage. Now what about converting a mixed fraction into a percentage? What's 5 and 1 6 as a percentage? Well first, let's focus on the number 1 over 6. Let's convert that into a percentage. So let's use long division. 6 doesn't go into a 1, so let's add a 0. Now 6 goes into 10 one time. 10 minus 6 is 4. And if we add a 0, 6 goes into 40 6 times. 6 times 6 is 36. And 40 minus 36 is 4. Now let's add another 0. 6 goes into 40 6 times. And notice that this process will keep repeating. So therefore, 1 over 6 is 0.16 with the 6 repeating. So if you want to round it, you could say it's about 0.167. Now, we need to convert 0.167 into... Well, actually, we're not going to convert it into a, a percentage yet. Now, the number 5 and 1, 6, that's basically 5 plus 1 over 6. And 1 over 6 is about 0.167. So the mixed fraction 5 and 1, 6 is 5.167. And it is this value that we want to convert into a percentage. So we're going to multiply it by 100. So therefore, this fraction is equal to 516.7% or if you want the exact answer, it's 516.666 repeated. Or you could just run it like this. So that's how you can convert a mixed fraction into a percentage. Now I want to show you one of my algebra courses that might be useful to you if you ever need it. So go to udemy.com. Now in a search box, just type in algebra and it should come up. So it's the one with the image with the black background. So if you select that option and if you decide to go to course content, you can see what's in uh, this particular course. So the first section, basic arithmetic, for those of you who want to focus on addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And it has a, a video quiz at the end. It's a multiple choice video quiz. You can pause it, work on the problems, and see the solutions. It covers long division, multiplying two large numbers, and things like that. The next tutorial is on fractions. Add in, subtracting fractions, multiplying, dividing fractions, converting fractions into decimals, and so forth. So. You can also take a look at that. Next, solve the linear equations, which we covered. And just more examples if you need more help with that. The next topic, order of operations, which is also useful. Uh, graphing linear equations. You need to know how to calculate the slope. You need to be familiar with the slope intercept form, standard form, and just how to tell if lines are parallel, perpendicular, and so forth. And there's a quiz that uh, goes with that as well. The next topic is on inequalities and absolute value expressions, which are also seen in a typical algebra course. And then we have polynomials, and that's a, a long section. And then factoring, you just that's another topic you need to master. And then system of equations. You can solve it by elimination, substitution. There's also word problems as well. Sometimes you got to solve equations with three variables, x, y, and z. So that could be helpful. 
Next, quadratic equations, how to use the quadratic formula, how to graph them, how to convert between standard and vertex form. And then you have rational expressions and radical expressions, solving radical equations, simplifying it, things like that. And every section has a quiz, so you can always review what you've learned if you have a test the next day. So here we have complex imaginary numbers. You need to know how to simplify those. Exponential functions, logs. I have a lot of videos on logs. And then just, this is just functions in general. A vertical line tests, horizontal line tests, how to tell if a function is even or odd. And then conic sections. Graphing circles, hyperbolas, ellipses, parabolas, and things like that. There's two video quizzes because it's actually a long section. And finally, arithmetic and geometric sequences and series. So that's my algebra course if you want to take a look at it and uh, let me know what you think.